We are happy to welcome Sage 100 customers to this special product tour of Sage Intact. In this 25-minute presentation, we'll show you the powerful accounting, dimensional reporting, and dashboards that earn Sage Intact the distinction of being the first and only preferred provider of accounting applications by the AICPA and its subsidiary, CPA.com. I'm Bob Shago with Sage, and today I'm going to share with you some of the things that make Sage Intact the preferred provider of the AICPA. Before I get into the main content, I'd like to go over a couple of housekeeping items. Then I'll dive into how you get to immediate visibility, organizational insight, and financial control, as well as how you can document decisions in the context of your financial records. During the presentation, feel free to type questions into the chat box or Q&A box. I'll try to get to all the questions during the course of the webinar. If I don't get to your questions, I'll follow up afterward. You'll also receive a link to the recorded webinar as a follow-up to the event. Also, please take a few minutes to fill out the survey at the end. We use survey results to improve future webinars. Now let's jump into looking at how Sage Intact provides immediate visibility. When I talk about immediate visibility, what I'm getting at is how you can get information about your entire organization right away. On the screen right now is an image of a dashboard, and I'm going to jump into the system and show this actual dashboard to walk through some of the ways it gives us immediate visibility into the company. In this demo environment, we've got a multi-entity company. This example company works with security systems, but it could be any kind of company like services, software, healthcare, and so on. Let me point out some of the general items on this screen. First of all, I have four entities, and this shows in some of the reporting that goes into the different locations. By looking at this button that says top level, I know I'm at the top level right now. I can drop into any of these companies from here. What you're seeing right now at the top level is the consolidated view of the financials across all of these entities. I have a real-time view of assets, revenue, net income, and expenses. I could create other performance cards like this. Each of these performance cards shows a summation of an account group. For example, in the case of asset, I've taken all the asset accounts and created a summary of these accounts for the current month. Underneath the summary, I can see a comparison of prior month giving me a performance trend at a glance. I can see that assets have gone up. This is a good thing. Revenue and net income have gone up as well. Also expenses, but that's not necessarily a great thing. But it isn't a worry if it stays in line with growth. We also have the ability to look at charts and graphs, like those on my dashboard. I can create additional charts and graphs and add them to the dashboard. My reports show amounts that I can drill down into right from the dashboard. I'll show you how I navigate to each entity. I just drop down here and select the Texas entity. The system opens a new tab with the same dashboard and with the same performance cards. Only now we're only looking at the metrics for the Texas entity. I have a question that just came in. It says, can people working at the other entity do accounting for that entity? That's a good question. To restate the question in terms of this example, if I'm working in Texas, can I do the accounting in Texas or does someone at the top level have to do that accounting? You can create users at the entity level like Texas. For example, people in the Texas office can log in to just the Texas entity and do accounting for that entity. They wouldn't see any of the other entities or locations. And then at the top level, we can see everything rolled up. I'm going to move forward in our agenda. Now I'm going to walk through organizational insight. How Sage Intact helps you get deeper insight into your organization to make those key decisions that drive success. As I just showed you from the top level, I have four entities. Now I can break down and filter that information to take a deeper dive into the company's financials. Again, this is from the top level. I'm able to look across all the companies and across all the entities within the company and analyze information for all those entities. Here with assets, we're looking at a summary of accounts. You'll notice that it changes color when I roll over it. I can click on that and drill down into all the accounts that make up the summary. I can further drill down on these accounts and see the transactions creating the account value. I can see all the general ledger journal entries. With just a few clicks, I get to source information behind the summaries. We also have the ability to roll over charts and drill down on reports. For instance, on this bar graph, as I roll over Texas, I can see the amount behind the bar. I can also see the amount behind Maine, California, and Florida. The same with any of these charts. I can also expand any of these charts. These reports and charts aren't limited to the library of pre-built reports. 
Using built-in reporting tools, you can edit or create your own financial reports that slice and dice information from the general ledger. You can also create your own transactional reports that span related data tables using the Sage Intact Interactive Custom Report Writer. This example of an interactive report in the Report Writer is looking at live data to show me exactly what I'm getting as I build it. You can do advanced analysis, including trends and pivot tables, without making a trip to Excel. In addition to drill down and expansion, we have this concept of dimensions. The way I break down net income by location here is an example of dimensions. Each location is a dimension tracked in the system. Item is also a dimension, and this allows me to look at revenue by item. In fact, I could break down revenue by any available dimension. If this were a services company, I might choose to look at revenue per employee or revenue per project and that sort of thing. I have another question that came in. It asks, how many dimensions come with Sage Intact? Well, the short answer is as many as you need. The longer answer requires some explanation. Sage Intact has a number of predefined dimensions. And some of these dimensions are associated with particular modules. For instance, if you have projects installed, you get the project and task dimensions. If you have inventory control installed, you get the warehouse dimension and the contract dimension comes with contracts. The other predefined dimensions are location, department, customer, vendor, item, employee, and class. Class is generally renamed and used to fit your specific business needs. Now, in addition to these predefined dimensions, Sage Intact has user-defined dimensions that you create. So if you have an element that drives your business, you can define it as a custom dimension and then tag transactions with that dimension. For example, if you were a printing company, you could track revenue and expenses by your different presses to determine the value that each press brings to the business. Nonprofit organizations often use user-defined dimensions to track grants and funds. Your system becomes highly expandable as far as filtering on different metrics that matter to you and to your business. In addition to dimensions, another way we break down information is by statistical accounts. A statistical account keeps track of non-financial information, like headcount or floor space or hours. In this case, we have revenue per retail hour by location. Now, revenue per retail hour shows a calculation using a statistical account called retail hours and a financial account, revenue. The retail hours statistical account collects retail hours in Texas, Maine, California, and Florida, and then I break down the revenue for each location by the number of retail hours for the location to get an amount that we see when we roll over Texas. When we capture the operational information right inside the system, we're able to use it more robustly without turning to external spreadsheets. I have another question coming in. What if I have companies with different charts of accounts, like companies in countries with strict charts of account guidelines? That's a nice segue. What I've shown you so far is a company where each entity has a shared chart of accounts. So we're continuously consolidating and looking at information as it rolls in. If you have a company that's more global, or you have different charts of accounts for one reason or another, maybe for government requirements, or maybe you inherited charts of accounts through acquisition, you would use Sage Intact Global Consolidations. Jumping over here to Global Consolidations, you see that at this top level, I have entities in multiple countries around the world. They're even running in different currencies. I can select Global Consolidation, where I can see my global organization displayed in a tree format. By clicking on Consolidations, I can consolidate just this group, or I can choose US dollars, which is the base currency for this company, and consolidate all my entities. I can roll them all up to my base currency, US dollars, for the period, and they'll roll up to this top level entity where I can analyze financial information in a single chart of accounts. I can look at and run reports against this consolidation, even though these companies all have different charts of accounts. They're all mapped to this top one. It only takes a few seconds or minutes to run, depending on the amount of data being consolidated. We have companies running global consolidations on a daily basis and some on an hourly basis during their end of period close. As you plan for expansion and growth, Sage Intact budget and planning leverages many account dimension and entity structures. I can easily build budgets based on prior actuals and get instant budget to actual reporting to keep me on track to achieve my financial goals.
As I move back to today's agenda, I hope you're getting a sense of how Sage Intact helps you get to the key decision-making metrics that drive your organization and drive it across different entities. In this section on financial controls, I'm going to show you how Sage Intact helps you maintain financial control in your organization. I'm going to walk through order entry and purchasing to demonstrate the different workflows and processes that are in place to keep you in control. A lot of financial control revolves around money coming into the company and going out of the company, the transactions. And most of our transactions happen at the entity level. I'm going to switch over to this tab for the Texas entity. Then I'll jump over to order entry. This is the overview map. It shows us links to basic data or objects like customers, warehouse, product line, items, and so on. We also have our tasks and our workflow. We can create a sales quote and convert that to an order, then convert that to a fulfillment document, and finally create a sales invoice off of that. By clicking this task on the map or on the main navigation menu, clicking the plus sign, I can create a new sales order. Or I can just click the name sales order to see a list of sales orders. Since you've all seen what it looks like to enter data on a form, I'm going to pull up some existing sales orders. As I go through this list of sales orders, I have this company, Texas Alarm Company, and they're asking about an order that they have a sales order number for. I can go ahead and use the order number, and as I bring up the order, I can see everything I need to know about this for the customer. I see a transaction date, due date, item total, and subtotal. Scrolling down, I see the line item showing what was ordered and how much it cost. I want to see if the sales order has been converted. Looking at the History tab, I see that we created a shipper and shipped the order. We also created an invoice for that. From here, I can pull up the sales invoice and look at any information around the invoice. I can access all this while I've got the customer on the phone. I'm creating a better customer experience while enjoying better visibility and control in the finance system. I've received another question. It says, can I bring in sales orders from Salesforce? Oh, definitely yes. Let's see, I'll bring up a demo company here that's associated with a Salesforce instance. I'll also bring up the associated Salesforce instance. Um, you may know that in Salesforce, we create opportunities. This opportunity represents an XYZ shoes order, and it shows the product that I'm selling. It also shows sales orders and a sales invoice created from the opportunity. There's back and forth communication. When I create an opportunity, I simply choose create sales invoice or create sales order and Salesforce sends the transaction over to Sage Intact. In Sage Intact, in this order entry transaction list, I can see that I have this XYZ shoes order. I can tell by the reference number that this is from the opportunity in Salesforce. I can also see all the information inside the order entry system. This integration allows salespeople to work in Salesforce and finance to work in Sage Intact. Jumping back to the Texas entity in this main demo company, you can see that each line item has additional fields. If this order is a subscription, I have the option of creating start and end dates and setting a renewal template for the order. I can also set up different dimensions for this order that will track with it all the way through to the general ledger. Let's move over to look at purchasing. Like order entry, we have an overview map that shows our workflow from requisition to purchase orders, receivers, and vendor invoices. I'll go ahead and create a purchase order. I'm just going to click on the purchase order icon to create this new purchase order. Know that if your main job revolves around purchasing, you can set this map as your home page at login. Our example company needs more stock, so I'm going to create a PO to buy items from Defender USA. I'm going to purchase 10 more of these Defender systems. I can see my extended price. As I create additional line items, the system will keep giving me line items to enter them on. Just like in order entry, I see the default vendor contacts and all the different controls. My header shows all the information from this transaction so far with all my information entered. I'll post this purchase order. Some days go by and I receive the order from the vendor. Now I go to the purchase order and convert it to a receiver. Come to find out the vendor's low on quantity. On my receiver, I note that I received eight of these. I don't want to pay for 10 when I only got eight. With the receiver updated, I'm going to post it. I can now convert this receiver to a vendor invoice. I see that everything is in here the way I expected it to be. I can see the vendor document number and post that with the vendor invoice. 
Now I have the vendor invoice posted in purchasing, but it did something else. It went over to accounts payable and it created a bill. So now if I go look at my bills in accounts payable, I see that I have this new bill to Defender USA. I can choose the bill and see everything that's on it. Now it's keeping track of account and amount rather than item and quantity. This is going to fall nicely into my chart of accounts and hit the general ledger. I've still got all the information about the bill and from here I can select bills to pay and move my payment process forward. On the back end, where I need to distribute indirect costs or revenues across departments, locations, or some other dimension, like a product or a project, dynamic allocations let me set up automated allocation journal entries to properly allocate periodic expenses and revenues that run automatically. With these allocations set up and running, I get a clear view of the true performance of my organization without having to run complex calculations in spreadsheets. Let's take a look at bills to pay. I have some options to provide me with both automation and controls. From printing checks to using ACH, Sage Intact created options by partnering with American Express. I'll jump over to my presentation to share some screenshots of these options. I have an option to use check delivery where Sage Intact sends your payment information to American Express and they cut and mail the checks written on your existing bank account. You eliminate the overhead of printing checks, stuffing envelopes, and mailing. It's all handled with a simple click. American Express ACH eliminates the need to create and maintain all those NACHA files. We also have Amex Charge Card, where you use an American Express card loaded into Sage Intact to pay bills. It creates a more secure transaction by only sending the vendor a one-time use number rather than your actual account number. They use that number to receive payments from your American Express account. As payments are made, American Express reports back to Sage Intact so you know what's been processed. It saves you from scouring your corporate card statements. Also, you have the American Express charge card benefits if you get points or money back. You also have the float time that comes along with the charge card where you pay the vendors today and don't have to pay American Express for about a month. Jumping back over to our control system, Sage Intact's built-in approval processes let me set approval requirements on bills waiting to be paid. I can even set up approvals on a requisition before the purchase process gets too far down the road. Approval can be set by dollar amount, by department, or by individual approvers. You can choose to have one approver at a certain dollar amount and then two or three approvers at a higher dollar amount. Approval notices get sent out to the approvers automatically and they can approve with a mobile device. And you're not left playing find the manager to get purchases approved. I have a question that came in on purchasing or vendor rather. Are vendor payments only made from the top level? Well, the short answer is not necessarily. You can set things up that way. When you create a vendor or customer, you have the ability to use them across the organization or limit to certain entities. This could be useful in keeping a list of vendors or customers short at the local level by not having vendors or customers that don't apply to that entity. For example, you don't need folks in Bangor, Maine worrying about paying a plumber in Dallas, Texas. However, you can also create approvals that keep control at the top level. By controlling vendors from the top level in a multi-entity organization, you can better manage costs and vendor performance. Essentially, you can move from having purchase managers at each location doing their own thing to a controlled budgeted procurement process at the top level. Let's look at one more area of visibility, knowing our actual cash position. With automated bank reconciliation connected to thousands of banks worldwide, we can reconcile daily and always know where our cash stands. This is part of Sage and Tax push for real-time visibility through continual close. Now that you have a better understanding of controls, let's move ahead to the next section. In this section, I'll talk about documenting decisions and how Sage Intact is all about documenting them in the context of your financial records. This isn't just about keeping notes in meetings. We keep track of conversations in a way that they can be easily found and looked at later. This is the same dashboard we've been looking at. I'm circling back to this revenue per retail hour and to the percentage of income chart. We see that as a percentage of revenue, California represents a large part of the company's net income. Maine is very small, Texas almost matches up with California, and Florida is competing with Maine. 
if we look at revenue per retail hour, we see who is dominant in efficiency. Moving over to the Collaborate feed, we see a note from Joanne, one of our financial staff. She says, Texas and California are showing similar revenue, but Texas is outperforming on a revenue per retail hour basis. Could we be having sales performance issues? And then there's a response. Perhaps a temporary shift in management talent would bring up the California numbers. This can be brought up with the board to make decisions at the macro level about the company and strategy, and then document it here to retrieve at any time. Jumping over to another demo organization, I'll show you another place we can document the why behind financial decisions. I can go directly to my Collaborate feed, which allows me to store these conversations with linked transactions. Clicking through to the related transaction, I see the subject of the conversation. We have a journal entry regarding penalties and a note with this journal entry. Team, I'm looking at our latest list of open items for month end. Who can tell me what this adjustment is for? Amy Dunn says, I created a support schedule that shows my calculation analysis for the entry. Notice that she's attached the spreadsheet and essentially stored it with the journal entry conversation. So months or a year from now, when we're looking at these transactions, we can see this conversation and understand what's happening. That's the power of the collaborative tool to document these collaborative decisions. Now I'm going back to our agenda to summarize what we've talked about. We looked at how Sage Intact consolidates information across your organization and how dashboards help you visualize that information in a more immediate way. We drilled down to get to the detailed information inside the system to make better decisions. I demonstrated how you can collaborate within your organization. You can take all the data that you're getting and work together to come up with a solution. I also showed that you can make decisions about what you're going to do next and then document those decisions in the context of your organization. Our discussion today wouldn't be complete without some mention of best in class and what we mean by that. Best in class is defined by Gartner as the superior product within a category of hardware or software. With best in class, you have the flexibility to choose the best product for your company. You just pay for what you need while you keep the existing tools and systems that work well in your organization. And then you integrate the system and create the right technology stack to exactly support your business needs. As a best-in-class financial management solution, Sage Intact allows you to build your unique solution that best fits your organization. We focus on delivering the best financial management solution for finance professionals. Our approach is to be the financial management solution that allows you to integrate with the best available solutions that you use today and whatever you'll need in the future. In fact, over 75% of our customers have integrated Sage Intact with at least two other systems. Our system is the only one preferred by the AICPA, the organization that wrote the book on accounting. Every U.S.-based company follows their standards, and they have over 430,000 members who have seen every accounting system out there. And of all the systems, ours is the only one they prefer. No other software company can say this. We're rated number one in customer satisfaction by G2 Crowd, and we've actually been number one in customer satisfaction since 2015, based on over 2,000 reviews from our customers. Our high satisfaction scores come from the way our product meets current business requirements and product direction and the way we're focused on finance features for finance people every quarter when we do our new releases. More users are likely to recommend our product to others versus any other vendor. In the Gartner Critical Capabilities Report, Sage Intact receives the highest score in core financials for lower mid-sized enterprises. This is for organizations with annual revenues between 50 million and 500 million that have their headquarters and the majority of their operations in a single country. It looks like we're getting close to the end of our time here. I'm not gonna answer any additional questions at this point, but if you have any questions, please type them into the chat area or the Q&A area so we can get those answered by email. If you're interested in learning more about Sage Intact, including special pricing for Sage 100 customers, please contact your Sage Intact partner your partner will also be following up with you after this webinar. Thank you for spending time with us today.